Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Sean Anderson, Most Valuable Podcast, and the upcoming segment is from our full Fast Break podcast that we recorded. And if you do want to check out that full podcast, head over to Blog Talk Radio slash The Fast Break. You'll be able to find the full podcast over there. But let's move on now to the draft, and specifically, we're going to be talking about two players today. We're going to be talking about Josh Jackson from Kansas, and small forward, and we're also going to be talking about Dennis Smith, the point guard from NC State. We're going to jump in and talk about Josh Jackson first, and the guy that reminds me, or at least if we're talking about most similar to last year, we're going to talk about Thanks, Dave. Yep. Thanks for running that one. Just a little wind out of um, sales there. Chief. But yeah, I mean, comparing it to last year and drawing, uh, you know, kind of, you know, d- lines, there, there was the top two in Simmons and Ingram who were guys who can ha- have the ball in their hands. You know, they were they were pretty much the top two. Mm-hmm. And then to, mm-hmm. this year you have Ball and Fultz. You really took the wins out of the sale because now I'm completely out of it. Uh, you have Ball and F- Fultz. And then after them you have... You know, Jalen Brown was the third pick overall last year, who was long, athletic, made his money, drive to the basket, was kind of underdeveloped size wide and was kind of underdeveloped shooting wise. And now third so size wise, he was good because you know the fact that he he had well, the he NBA small. body. Well, he, but he was small. Like he didn't have the the he didn't have the the muscles. Is yeah, what I'm saying he wasn't yeah. he wasn't built yet for for the NBA. Fair enough. And, and with Josh Jackson, you know, looking who's right behind Ball and Fultz. Is Josh Jackson. So really what I'm asking is, do you see the similarities that I'm throwing out there? Do you think that he is similar to Jalen Brown as Jalen Brown was last year going into the draft? I think he has a similar stock to uh, Jalen Brown. I don't know if they're similar play styles exactly. They're not quite, but I think Josh Jackson has potential to be something that Jalen Brown isn't, and that is someone who is a, a whole lot more effective around the boards. He's a whole lot more active down low than Jalen Brown is. So on the one end, he gives you that, but he's also not as explosive off the ball as Jalen Brown is. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, they're so, like the comparison height, weight, build is kind of close, but I think the play styles differ a little bit. The The one thing I like about uh, Josh Jackson as of late is his consistency. Uh, just in the last week, you know, 18 points, 15 points, 23, 20, 22. And during that time, he had, he had a three straight games of 10, 10 boards. I mean, that is just hella production right there. And yeah. against Baylor, Kentucky, Iowa State, okay, bluff game, but they, they took him to OT. And they lost. And uh, they lost but the, yeah. the, the one the game that stuck out to me was the Baylor game because that was a huge game. Two it was versus, a statement game. Yeah, it was two versus three. It was in Allen Fieldhouse. But it was the game where Josh Jackson really did lead him, lead, lead Kansas to a win because you saw him step up big. Mm-hmm. He had this huge dunk. It was ridiculous. Going yep. baseline uh, in, in the second half, it was it was phenomenal. Uh, but no, but no. looking at him, I, I understand – where it comes from, and, and they differ in, in some ways. I think Jalen was a better free throw shooter, uh, but Josh Jackson's a better three point shooter, uh, and I think Josh Jackson has overall the best f- field goal percentage. But looking at those two players, I see Josh Jackson as a more polished Jalen Brown, where he's not going to come in as raw as Jalen well, Brown. That, we were completely that, wrong about Jalen Brown. Well, and that's just it. I don't think we were completely wrong. I was. I mean, I'll say he was. You said he was a bust. I said he was a bust. Before I just, to me, yeah. the big thing about Jalen Brown was. The two negatives that they had on the ESPN draft profile yep. is that he didn't have a great jump shot, had to improve it. Yep. And to me, his handling was the best part. Like, you have to have handles to play in the NBA. If you're constantly losing the ball, constantly turning it over, yep. especially when one of your strengths is, and I quote, an impressive slasher, finisher at the rim. If I see that and then you need to improve your handles, I go, well, then you're not, like, how often are you finishing at the rim? Because I can just knock it loose because of your handles. I think... But the thing that I do find funny is I have both profiles l- l- pulled up right now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there are there are some parallels. Like, for Josh Jackson, you see incredible motor. Well, for Jalen Brown, they just said excellent motor. So mm. both of their motors are there. They're both guys yeah, who motor. are... Yep. They're both guys that... Josh Jackson's a good slasher. Jalen Brown is an impressive slasher. Both need to improve their jump shot. The thing that's different and the reason why I wouldn't, like, I'm not going to say that, oh, Josh Jackson's going to be a better version of Jalen Brown, but the one thing I will say is why I'm not questioning Josh Jackson like I did Jalen Brown is because I see things like basket, high basketball IQ and I see excellent passer. I see those two things along with unselfish. This is a guy that's not only going to 
get to the hoop and score, he's going to be looking for teammates and to get others involved. That was the thing I was going to bring up is, is why I have more faith in Josh Jackson, why mm-hmm. I feel, feel he's more polished is because of you his gotta leader. got to have this. Because of his gotta leadership. Because I, you know, we really didn't see Jalen Brown need to be that big of a leader last year at Cal mm-hmm. because I don't think they made the tournament, or they if they did, they were one and done. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't exactly remember, but or, or they were a bubble team. But where... Um, Josh, Josh really Jackson, the spotlight. he's in Kansas, man. I mean, this is he's a not team come, that always kind of plops. But he, but he's stepping into. I mean, he's not stepping into Cal. He's not stepping into a team that mm-hmm. really has never you know outshined. I mean, yep. he's stepping into Kansas. He's stepping into a, a historic program, and he led this team in that Baylor game. That was the the, the game that really sticks out to me. Where I'm not going to question the other game. I mean, he can he could slip up, and the tournament's going to tell a little bit more of what kind of a leader he was. But mm-hmm. he was the guy that was composed after the game. He did the interview with. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Shelly Smith, mm-hmm. um, and, and he was just composed, and he was like, you know, it, it's not just me, it's the guys around me, but and he, he talked about his leadership and how he does feel like he, he he needs to step up and he needs to be the guy, and he didn't seem afraid of it. And, and he, they, win, they win that Baylor game, and he just looked – ridiculous I, I i just see him and i don't have as many mm-hmm. questions as jalen brown i think he, I, I think he's similar in the way that you know they do need to work on, on similar games they do have you know the the, the same positives are, are there but i just i don't question him because he doesn't question himself i want to see what happens in the conference tournament for kansas and i want to see how josh jackson can he plays. continue to take well, over games it's not just that it's kansas when we get to conference tournament and then the tournament besides the I want to go all the way back when it was the first ever video me and you ever did. Okay. When we we're talking about Kentucky, Kansas. Mm. Kansas, to me, has always been a team where it's like, yeah, they might win a game or two, but they're not going to go to the Final Four. Yeah. They're a team that I just expect to get upset. And the one thing, Sean, I did look at, Cal last year was a four seed. Oh. But you might not remember that because they lost to Hawaii in the first round. That's what it was. I knew they Damn. They, they lost to Hawaii. The score was like something. My bad, Cal. They scored fans. 66 points in that game, was how many points And Jalen Brown scored. either didn't play or had like. He, I don't think it, he played in that one. Yeah, because he, he was injured yeah. or, or he, he wanted to take. I, I, I That's what it was. was. Uh, but yeah. they lost to Hawaii in that first round game. But and that was one thing. Josh Jackson does have the injury problems. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brown did. Getting back to Josh Jackson, though, I want to see how he he and Kansas play in the Big Ten ter- or Big Twelve tournament. Pardon me, and then in the actual tournament. That mm-hmm. is going to be my big barometer until we get to the draft workouts in the off season. Yeah, I, I think I think Josh Jackson's a a, a very. He's he's just he's gifted, and I don't know if he's going to be able to take that and, and score like he has been able to mm-hmm. in college. I don't know if he's going to be you know better than Jalen Brown. I don't know that, but at least from a prospect stand standpoint, I'm not questioning him as as much as I, I, I have. think. He, I think he's uh, like a half tick above him as far as a prospect mm-hmm. coming out of college. And I think the one thing I want to see going forward is that dominance, is that ability to be the go to guy with the ball in his hand, scoring. And I want to watch him. Like, and I think it's more he's, situational he's, stuff as well. He doesn't need to prove that he's going to go out and score 25 a night. It's more see, that's, uh, I think he does. But I think he I needs think, to go out there and become the guy. And just that's him. I it's think, Kansas, I, think if him. He, I think if he leads his team to victory, I think that's enough in my books. If, if, he, if he has a terrible game like Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum in that, in that Duke mm-hmm. North Carolina game, 19 points in the second half. That's huge. That, oh, yeah. that sticks out huge to me. If Josh Jackson can have a performance where he's able to lead Kansas back and step up in a big moment, like that game that goes into OT against Iowa State, yeah. if he wins him, it wins him that game in OT, that just adds to his draft profile. That, yep. That's what I, I'm looking forward to. But why, why does he need to be scoring for you? Uh, I think one of the things is you you really need to impress and kind of show off the fact that you are a better shooter than people give you credit for, that you can take over a game offensively because when, when I think about today's NBA, there's more and more uh, focus being put on offensive play and less to defensive play, and the 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 refing continues to uh, heavily weigh in that mm-hmm. direction. So I feel like the direct the, I feel like the future of basketball, you really need to be a, a very efficient offensive player, and he has the ability to do that. And not only does he have the build to do that, mm-hmm. but he can also go back. He's pretty good on the offensive boards, which is not something you're going to get out of everybody who gives you that effort down low. So yeah. I really want him to continue growing his offensive game and keep showing that consistently because, look, he's he's had like three or four bad games this year, like really bad stinker games. But when you get him a, early on and you get him really like all in on the game in the first couple possessions, you feed him and he gets hot and you just you you get a different guy. 
Yeah, that's why I want to watch him keep doing. The one reason why I'm totally not going to jump on that bandwagon of he needs to take over a game Mm -hmm. is because when I think of March Madness, the big thing I look at is three point shooting. March Madness is all about guards. When you get when you get to that time, it's okay late in the game. Who can shoot the better three ball? And usually it is the guards that can shoot the better. March Madness is purely built around guards. It has been for the last decade. And when I look at this Kansas team. I see a guy like Frank Mason the third who is averaging more points Wisconsin. from Josh Jacks. Sam Decker, Frank Kaminsky. Those aren't guys. I know, but it's they had two guys who were standout players. And, and I'll give it that. they lose to but, they lost to Duke, who had guards, who had Grayson Allen, who had his coming out party. Yeah. Who was a guard. Ricky, what were you saying? Frank Mason the <laughs> third, on the other hand. Averaging four more points this season than Josh Jackson. Mm-hmm. I think he's gonna like when the game's on the line, Mason's gonna be the guy they go to. It's not gonna be a design for Jackson because Mason's all like he's the true leader. Not that and I'm not taking anything away from Josh Jackson, but Mason's the guy who's been there. He's the veteran leader, he's the scoring leader. And also when you look at his three point numbers, fifty one percent compared to thirty five for Josh Jackson. I think Mason's the one going to take that final shot. I think Wisconsin even beat Kentucky because of their guard play. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> um, going back to Josh Jackson and more of – well, and one thing, too, with the shooting, I mean, that's something the guys can improve. I mean, he's 18, 19 years old. He's going to mm-hmm. be able to improve a shot. What? I mean, he's going to be able to step up and improve that free throw percentage. He's going to be able to shoot – able to uh, – you know, he, he doesn't have a wonky – And that's – He's not like, you Lon- he's not like shooting yeah. like Lonzo Ball and shooting at a terrible, yeah. terrible like percentage. He does have the stroke. Or used to shoot before yeah, correct but I don't think I don't think he's got a shooting problem. I think he's just hand. got a – but yeah, I don't think he, he's got, he's got the he's got a nice stroke. He's got a nice mm-hmm. shot. It's just it's not going in for right. him. I think that efficiency can come. And the three point you mentioned up until this last really you know six games, he hasn't been taking consistent mm-hmm. shots at three. In these last six, he was two of five, four of four, two of five. Two he of takes four, them when they're open. One of three and two of three. And before that, there's so many games where it's like one of three, one of two. Yeah, he's not zero zero. He's one, not going to be zero, the guy one, to jack you know. up. Yeah, he's not, yeah, yeah, not, not going to be game. Like, but yeah. like you said, if it's open, you're not going to pass that yeah, up. He's not. Days. He's not like Fultz, who's Fultz, who's taking like every shot uncontested. He's not yeah. going to be like Lonzo Ball taking mm-hmm. a step back thirty foot jumper. <laughs> the the thing is, is that I just yeah. think that he, is, since he mm-hmm. is so young, he will be able to well, to, to, to to develop that shot. Yeah. And just the last thing I want to say to go off of what mm-hmm. you were saying, Sean, um, before the three point numbers was. I looked at, and this is going back to Jalen Brown a little bit to kind of bring it full circle, is when I looked at Jalen Brown last year, I'm going to say improve his jumper. It's a wash for both of them because I feel like unless you're a dead-eye shooter, everyone coming into the NBA can do a little bit to improve their jumper. But when I see something like, oh, can improve his handles, I see something that's more of a skills issue. And it's one of those things where it's like if you can't, if you're losing the ball and can't handle it in the speed of college, what's going to happen when the guys are quicker, bigger, faster, think, stronger in the NBA? But mm-hmm, when I see mm-hmm. the kind of things on Josh Jackson sheet where it's things like he struggles with the flow as a scorer and can get overly aggressive and lead to foul trouble, those are things that to me aren't necessarily skills. It's more That's mental like and immaturity. Up here, yep. and that can be molded. Yeah, he's yeah. got the skills. As as, he just needs to be molded. As far as the handles thing, I think one of the uh, most interesting things about having good handles in college is you'll see a lot of these guys who hit their growth spurt a little bit later. They were mostly playing guard growing up because you always see guys who you know hit that growth spurt mm-hmm. and they were guard, guard, guard. Oh, now I'm a forward, mm-hmm. and it's just you hit that point, and those guys carry over that skill of. I'm used to having the ball in my hands. I'm very fluid with it. I know how to control it well. So I think that's one of those things where he wasn't. He never really got stuck in that role where he was like the one guard for his team. So mm-hmm. he, and that's I feel like unless you were unless you had the opportunity, you're probably gonna have you know need to improve handle because yeah his turnover numbers aren't pretty right now. But I think that for the most part he does a decent enough job. And the one thing that I want to say because I know people are gonna say you know Jalen Brown's a bigger guy than Josh Jackson, but. The thing that we that that I want to bring up, Ricky, and before we get into where Josh Jackson will actually go, uh, it's more of we we see you know the the assets, we see the wingspan, we see the size, mm-hmm. but me and you, we, we were watching a game uh, for for you know for, for something, and we saw a guy that was six nine, and there was a teammate that he had that was listed at six nine, 
But the guy mm-hmm. who was you, there was a, there was another player six nine. He was just built, and you were like, he's got NBA size. Well, and there's that something was it. there's something with Josh Jackson that it feels like he knows how to use his size. He knows how to use his length in a more effective way than Jalen Brown knew how to use his size. Well, and that's it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say because we can say the team we were watching was Robert Morris. Yeah, and that was it. It was Darius Paul. We were watching one of their games, and it's just when you have that body, it's different than when you don't. And the thing that Josh Jackson is. Yeah, he doesn't have that thing where it says in the profile, oh, he's got an NBA body, but he's still going to be a very athletic wing for a team that drafts him. And now let's get into the important question. Where do you see him going? Is he a top five pick? Is he a top three pick? Do you see a specific team that he fits well with? Because in my last mock draft, I had him going to Phoenix because they had the third overall do you pick. Tank, do you have Tankathon right I do up? have Tankathon Give me open. the top five from five to over. Bos- yeah, give me from one to five. Boston, Phoenix, L.A., Philly, Orlando. I don't. And think, that's going to change. I don't think yeah. Bo- like as of right now. I don't think he's Boston not, takes him. I yeah, don't he's think not going to be the number pick. Him. I think one, two are pretty locked up. Who's three, four, five? I, I don't know if two. Like, no, like no, I'm saying them. it's Markel oh, it's and then and it's Ball. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. one way or the other. It's yeah. those two. Who's three, 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 Lake, five? Lakers, Philly, Orlando. I don't see him going to Philly. I could see. I I could see Best Philly. player available. I could see, t- you Philly. see Philly. <laughs> if the Lakers, where's the spacing on that fucking if, if team? Oh, he's a Bulls fan. That's if it. the yeah. Lakers don't, don't care about if the Lakers don't take him, I could see Philly just taking him just because he's the BPA. See, yeah, I think I, I think they're gonna go Dennis. Uh, the guy we're gonna talk about later. Oh, Smith. I think, uh, yeah, but I, I think I think the Lakers could, and I know you're gonna be like, why would they take him? They've got Randall. They've got Nance. I I don't totally buy into Randall. I think Nance is gonna be a good energy guy, but I don't know if he'll ever be that starter guy you rely on. Mm-hmm. And I think that Josh Jackson absolutely could fit that role. Well, I see I see that he can fit that role because I, I think they should be going guard for sure. I I don't know if they'll go Dennis Smith because you look at Ingram and you know there's been talk that he could play the two, so that means D'Angelo could play the one if they even keep D'Angelo. Uh but you know, they, they can they can work it out to Bold, where, where where they do Bold. have well, no, there there's been trade talks that and, and Cowards yeah. mentioned that they shouldn't be keeping them. Like I'm just saying I'm just saying yeah. there's a possibility that they don't keep Russell. But you can have Russell, Ingram, and Jackson as your one, two, three, and I think that could be somewhat of effective because Ingram does has, have that shooting. D'Angelo can do it pretty much anywhere offensively, mm-hmm. and Josh mm-hmm. Jackson can can make his money driving the lane. So I, I think I think it's not too crazy. I, I see that Phoenix is probably his best spot. I don't know if Phoenix will be in the spot to take him because if they have the choice, Ball or Fultz yeah, over with, Josh Jackson, I'd yeah. like they'll take the guards. But looking at them, I think you're I think unimpressed TJ, with Chris and Bender. I know Bender's injured now, but, but those uh, are those are guys who play four of the five, four and five. He will right, be right. Play, stepping into three. three yeah. I think TJ Warren's a guy who's a great, who could be a phenomenal bench player and could be a starter for a team. But I see Josh Jackson's potential as something that's bigger than TJ Warren. So I think that you put him to where Bledsoe, Booker, Josh Jackson, Chris, and and Bender. I think that's a phenomenal starting five. So I think I think that's the best fit. I just don't know if it's going to be the fit come time to the draft where it's where possible, Phoenix yeah. ends up. But that's just me. Thank you. Oh, shit. Oh, it's just one of our videos scared me a little bit. Don't forget to check out that one. And also don't forget to check out patreon.com slash podcast. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.